right. Good morning, First Baptist Church. Let's give Miss Julia Mills a round of applause. Amen. All right. If you would stand, let's let's praise the Lord. Amen. Old rugged cross. be here this morning? I like the words of that song. We'll exchange that cross for a crown and that's going to be very soon. Glad to see you here at First Baptist Church today. Aren't y'all glad to be here today? I've talked to many of you on the phone. I've seen some of you in person, but it's something special when we can come together and worship the Lord. And so let's go to him in prayer right now. Lord Jesus, we love you so much. It's a privilege and honor to be able to gather together in your name and worship you in spirit and truth. We just want to ask that you would allow the Holy Spirit to move throughout this place. And if there's any hindrances, Lord, remove those hindrances right now so that we can hear clearly from you, so that we can experience you through worship. I thank you for every person that's here in this place. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives. We thank you for the safety and protection that you have given to us over these many months. Lord, just continue to use us to be a witness for you wherever we are. Bless our time of worship today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated here. Now, you have a bulletin, I hope, today, and you can see that there's announcements in there about upcoming events here at First Baptist Church. And so it is a privilege to see you in this place. And those of you that are watching us online, Invite someone to come and be a part of the service. Maybe someone that you know that's staying at home today as uh, we are preparing to talk about the Battle of Jericho. And I want to say this before we get into the message today. 
I can guarantee you that there will be some things that you did not know about the battle of Jericho. And it's going to be a great experience to hear from God and what he has to say for us. Now I want you to look around this building today. It is a building. It is not the church. It is a building where we come together to worship the Lord. And just be thankful for all that God is doing. Yesterday we had the experience of being able to minister to over hundreds of people here in our Family Life Center, presenting the gospel to them. Uh, one little boy was letting us know that he is getting baptized today. And so that is awesome as to what the Lord is doing in his life. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to give Miss Julie and all those that volunteered uh, this past season a round of applause right now, if you would. We could not do it without a staff member and our volunteers doing the work of the Lord. And I want you to know today, if you were here yesterday, you realize that God is doing a great work in our community. And he's allowing the church here to provide that ministry to other people. And so I'm so excited to be here with you today. And so let's continue to worship the Lord through song right now. How great that I see the stars I hear 
at his voice and how great is our God sing with me how great is our God and oh we'll see how great how great is our God Take up offering, Lord. Uh, let us be cheerful givers, Lord, to you. And Lord, I just want to ask you to be with the sick and the lost in this community, Lord. We meet, we need you. They need you more than ever. And I just ask that you forgive us for where we have failed you, Lord. And all these things we pray in your holy and precious name. future 
looking for my good You make all things work together For your glory And for your name Are you thankful this morning that God is not finished with us? I love you and I appreciate you and it's great to see all of you here today in this place of worship. We have been walking through the book of Joshua on Sunday mornings and as we walk through the book of Joshua we're going to be talking about this morning. It is the month of March and we're going to be talking about marching but marching in a sense where God is going to get the victory. And so this morning, I want you to understand that God does have a strategy for success. And we have to get in on that strategy of success in order for us to be successful. In life, there are strategies. When you play sports, girls, there's a strategy, right? You have to run plays and you want to be able to win the game. And as we think about politics, and some of you may want to stay out of politics, but there's a strategy to try to put someone in office. And one that we may be most familiar with today, maybe not, but is a military strategy. A military strategy is where you get the finest minds together and these finest minds decide whether they're going to be able to attack or if they're going to be able to put their defenses up to be able to win the battle and ultimately a war. 
This morning, when you think of some of the most well-known generals, some of you may think of Ulysses S. Grant. Some of you would think of Robert E. Lee. Some of you would be most familiar with General Patton. Maybe some of you, Douglas MacArthur. Most recently, Norman Schwarzkopf. And so with that in mind, as we think about these generals that are used to accomplish military battles and ultimately victories, let's look at Joshua chapter 6. I'm going to ask if you would stand as we read this today. And I want you to listen very carefully to these words because these are the inspired words of God. And we apply them to every aspect of our life because the scriptures are always sufficient in every area of our life. The Bible says, Now Jericho was securely shut up because the children of Israel, none went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and the mighty men of Valyar. You shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go around the city once. This you shall do six days. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horn before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn. And when you hear the sound of the trumpet, let all the people, that all the people shall shout with a great shout, then the wall of the city will fall down flat. And the people shall go up every man straight before him. Then Joshua the son of Nun called the priest and said to them, Take up the ark of the covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said to the people, Proceed and march around the city and let him who is armed advance before the ark of the Lord. So it was, when Joshua had spoken to the people, that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Lord advanced and blew the trumpets and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. The armed men went before the priest who blew the trumpets and the rear guard came after the ark. While the priest continued blowing the trumpets, now Joshua had commanded the people saying, listen to this very carefully. Listen to it very carefully. You shall not shout or make any noise with your voice, nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth until the day I say to you, shout, then you shall shout. So he had the ark of the Lord circle the city, going around it once. Then they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. Then the seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horn before the Lord, the ark of the Lord, went on continually and blew the trumpets. And the armed men went before them. But the rear guard came after the ark of the Lord, while the priests continued blowing the trumpets. And the second day they marched around the city once and returned to camp. So they did six times. But it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and marched around the city seven times in the same manner. On that day only they marched around the city seven times. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you reveal your truth and your will for our life through the scriptures. And help us to hear clearly what you would have to say to us today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated here. This morning we're going to look at God's strategy for success. And his strategy is going to give the children of Israel success at Jericho. And you can sum it up this way, how to live 
a victorious Christian life. Because as you've heard me say before, the Bible is written to serve as an example to us, especially the children of Israel, as to how we are supposed to be living today. And there are some great truths that we will see this morning. First of all, God had promised Joshua a victory over Jericho. God promised Joshua that they would have the victory at Jericho. He says here in verse 2, I have handed Jericho its king and its best soldiers over to you. There's a truth that we need to understand about the promises of God. Never doubt in the dark what God has revealed to you in the light. Let me say that again. It's a wonderful saying that I heard many years ago. Never doubt in the dark what God has revealed to you in the light. When dark clouds come in life and there are difficult days ahead, we can always trust Jesus Christ. Always. And when we trust in Him, we place our confidence in Him. God has got it all taken care of. And He was revealing this to the children of Israel. Joshua had to trust God. Let me ask you this morning, who are you trusting in? Are you trusting in God? Now, I would say that probably just about every person in this room would say, yes, I trust God. But you can say that you trust God, but your actions will reveal whether or not you truly trust God. You see, we can say one thing, but we have to look at our lives to see if we've really placed our confidence in God. The Bible here with this story is letting us know, letting us know that there are no obstacles too big for God. Do you have any obstacles in your life right now? We all do. But when we face those obstacles in life, there's nothing too big for God. And when we understand that Everything that is over our head is under His feet. We realize that no matter what we face in life, nothing is too big for our God. You see, most of the people, when they make their God small and themselves big, then the obstacles become too big in their life. But when you make a big God, and He is a big God, yet He's a personal God, then you realize that no matter what you face in your life, God's got it all under control. And that gives us hope, that gives us assurance. And as believers, when we enter into spiritual battles, if we are obedient, and that's the key, if we are obedient to God, He will give us that spiritual victory. Now, let me make this very clear. There will be no victory if you're not obedient to God. There will will not be any victory in my life if I'm not obedient to God. I can't live however I want to live in disobedience to God and then turn around and ask God to bless my life and to bless what I'm doing. He doesn't operate like that. In fact, we understand that when we are facing spiritual battles in life, if we trust in God, He has already declared that we have the victory. Now, if you already know that you have the victory, why would you doubt in the dark what God has revealed in the light? A couple of weeks ago, I was talking to the basketball team, the girls, and I said, we are going to win this Saturday if you do what you're told to do. If you execute and if you work as a team, we will win. One of the girls on the team, she said, hey, we shouldn't say that we're going to win. We should say we might win or, or it's a possibility. And this is what I told her. You have to believe that you're going to win. If you doubt that you are going to win, in all likelihood, you may never win. And doubt is the opposite of faith. And I'm not one of those people that some people are like this. They say, well, you just claim it and God will give it to you. God doesn't operate like that. He expects us to have faith. But He operates within our faith that we have because we're trusting in Him to be able to do it. Paul said it this way in Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Yet in all things, what does all things mean? All things, we are more than conquerors through Him who loves us. 
We are conquerors. Now, some of you may have gone throughout your life and you haven't conquered anything. But I'll tell you, if you know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, He has already declared us to be victors with the battles that we face in life. And Joshua was understanding this. God said to Joshua, Joshua, you've already got the battle won. I'm going to give the king and the men of valor to you. And so listen to this. We can have victory over the world. John said it this way in John chapter 5, verse 4. Listen to this. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Are you an overcomer? If you are in God, you are an overcomer. You can overcome any obstacle that the world, the flesh, and the devil may put before us if you are in God. And then he goes on and he says this. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Ready for this? Our faith. You know why people doubt? You know why people are sometimes just rubbing their hands together saying, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Man, the world is so bad. What is going on in our country? What is going on in society? Hey, if we are in Christ Jesus, we know that we overcome the world because of our faith in Him. Man, that's just awesome. So when you hear someone doubting and wondering what is going on, the problem is oftentimes their faith. They may have placed their faith in the wrong things or the wrong person. But when we place it in God, we know that our faith overcomes the world. Secondly, not only do we understand that God promised Joshua a victory here, but He also revealed to Joshua... To Joshua only, the strategy for success. He didn't reveal it to anyone else but Joshua. That is worth noting. God has people that he is directly speaking to, and he has a strategy for success. And I believe if you are a believer, God is speaking to you. How does he primarily speak to us today? Through his word. He reveals truth to us. He gives us His strategy for success in His Word. And He tells Joshua in this moment that Jericho is going to be the first battle. Jericho is going to be the first place after they cross the Jordan River where they will start conquering the land. Now, Some of you may know a little bit about Jericho. It's one of the oldest cities in the world. It's been around for a long time, even at this particular point, when God is revealing this to Joshua. And this is what would happen. Jericho would be used to drive a wedge through the middle of Canaan. It would separate the northern and the southern sections there. And once Jericho had fallen, the rest of the land could be taken as well. How many of you realize today... That when God is getting ready to do a great work, He doesn't look at the smallest things. Oftentimes, He takes us right into the heat of the battle, to the most difficult places, and says, Hey, that's where I want you to go. You know what? You can't be a coward and follow after God. You have to go exactly where He wants you to go. He has a strategy for success. And as they were going to this Jericho moment... The people inside this city, they were ready for attack. The Bible says that none went in and none went out. They had their defenses up. A little bit of information about this city that you need to know. They say the walls could have been as high as 20 feet high. And the walls could have been as thick as 8 feet. And perhaps there was double and even triple gates that were closed, shut down. The city itself was about a half mile around. And from a human perspective, this would been, have been impossible for the children of Israel. Jericho was secure. And you know a little bit about military strategy. When you are secure and you have your defenses up, you're more likely to be able to defeat the enemy because you have a wall. In most cases, not all cases. 
Especially if you have more people and, and your military outnumbers their military. You are prepared for success. But I want you to notice this. He didn't tell Joshua to discuss this military strategy with the military men and get their thoughts about it. I want you to notice that. Uh, Joshua didn't have a war council meeting and say, Hey guys, what do you think about this? Is this a good strategy? You know why he didn't do that? He heard directly from God that this is what he was supposed to do and tell the people to do. You say, well, some of these guys I'm sure had some great ideas and some great thoughts about the situation. They might have. But Joshua was the commander, and he gave the command that came from God, which was to advance and not to retreat. The command is to advance. Hey, notice this. Joshua didn't call all the people together and said, Hey, let's have a vote on this to see if this is the right strategy. You say, well, that's not Baptist. We're supposed to vote on everything, right? Listen, not if God has already commanded it and declared it. It doesn't matter what you vote on it or how you vote because if God has said it, it has been declared and we're responsible for doing what He says for us to do. It'd be like somebody today saying, hey, let's have a vote on the Great Commission. Do we want to go and make disciples of all the nations? I'm going to vote no. We would be in direct disobedience towards God. Notice Joshua didn't do that because here in this moment God specializes in the impossibilities. The impossibilities. Do you feel like there's something impossible going on in your life today? I'm here to tell you the good news that if, if you're looking at an impossible situation that with God all things are possible. The children of Israel were learning this lesson time and time again. You remember, even before the crossing of the Jordan River, there was the, the people that came together to the Red Sea exactly where God led them to so that God could show them, hey, this Red Sea is nothing. I can part it and you'll walk over on dry land. Interesting how God does miracle after miracle in our life and still we doubt Him. We don't trust Him. We wonder if everything's going to work out as we hoped it would. My friends, with God, He specializes in the impossibilities and what you may think is impossible. With God, He can do anything. Thirdly, understand this. God gave Joshua specific instructions. The Bible says here in verse 16 of Joshua chapter 6, And the seventh time it happened... When the priests blew the trumpets that Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Now notice the specific instructions here. March around the city one time for six days. Have seven priests carry seven ram's horn trumpets in front of the ark. But on the seventh day, march around the city seven times while the priests Blow the trumpets. You notice something, don't you? You notice the number seven. Seven is God's number of completion. In seven days, God created the universe. In Revelation, He speaks to seven churches. He speaks to the pastor in order to be able to speak to the people. Seven is the number of completion. Don't you think God knows what He's doing when he picks a certain amount of people and a certain amount of opportunities that he has, because in this moment, when the trumpet blast, when you hear it sound, have all the troops give a mighty shout. When they give a mighty shout, what's going to happen? Some of you, if you were in that moment, you'd say, well, I'm not so sure this is going to happen. I'm not so sure. I've never seen this before in my life. How do I know that it's going to happen? Well, listen to this. Joshua tells the priest 
what to do. As he receives specific instruction from God, he goes to the priest and he says, this is what you do. The Ark of the Covenant is going to be there. The presence of God is going to be represented there. Joshua goes to the troops and tells them what to do. And notice what I read in verse 10. It is worth noting. He says, do not shout or let your voice be heard. Don't let one word come out of your mouth. Don't you just like that? When I, when I read that, I, I'm just amazed by that. He tells the troops what to do. Don't shout or let your voice be heard. Don't let one word come out of your mouth. Now, I want you to think about this. This is kind of comical, I think. Don't let one word come out of your mouth. How would you do in that situation? How would you do? Would you receive the instruction with enthusiasm and confidence? Or would you say, who is he to tell me what to do? Not one word. Not lifting up my voice. David Jeremiah points this out. He says, Joshua didn't tell the Israelites how many times they had to circle the city. Or precisely what would happen when their marching days were done. He didn't give all the specifics as to what God had given to him. David Jeremiah went on to say the people received instructions one day at a time. And they obeyed one day, one step at a time. Hmm. Some would say that Joshua was trying to hide something from them. That Joshua wasn't just being up front with it. But God doesn't reveal everything to us when we want Him to reveal everything to us. In fact, the reason that Joshua may not have told them all the specifics there is because God was testing their faith. Joshua may have also been testing them to see if they could follow directions and instructions to do what they were asked to do. He says, don't say a word until I tell you to say a word. And this strategy would strike hearts into the fear of the people that were in Jericho. Can you imagine maybe some of the guys up on top of the tower there, and that's usually where some of them would be located, and they're watching these people just, just march around, and they're, they're talking about it inside the city and say, what are they doing? What are they doing? You know what? God was melting the hearts of those that were in Jericho. You see, the the shout of victory was a shout of faith in God. The shout of victory was a shout of faith in God. And now we would see as the walls come tumbling down, these stepping stones would lead to their goals. The wall would be in front of them. Now, why you say what Joshua say, don't say a word? Some people, if they were able to talk about this, they'd probably say, hey, this is not a military strategy at all. Has Joshua lost his mind here? If they were able to talk amongst themselves. Do you think maybe some of them would have said, I don't think Moses would have done it this way. Moses was a fighter. Joshua used to be a fighter, but maybe now that he's our leader, he's he's weak. Maybe if they were able to talk among themselves, they would create a lot of doubt there. Maybe some would say, Joshua used to be a warrior. Maybe some would even say, well, God speaks to me too, just like he does to Joshua. You see, if people are able to talk and discuss, most of the people have a tendency to think negatively instead of positively. You know why? Even in our world today, we have been cultured to think negatively instead of positively because of what we put into our ears, what we listen to, what we watch, what we see. And know this, was God testing the people? I think that He was. 
He was testing them to see if they would be obedient to Him in all things. Because our job isn't to understand everything God does, but to obey what He tells us to do. Hey, that's good. Let me say it again. Our job isn't to understand everything that God does, but to obey all that He tells us to do. The psalmist said it this way in Psalm 46.10, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Who will be? God will be. How many of you remember the Iraq War? Is that still fresh on your minds? Do you remember what happened after the Iraq War? A little different than maybe most victories that America has won. We started giving credit to our military commanders and the strategy that we used instead of to God. Adrian Rogers says that he believes something happened to our nation after that war. We gave credit to man instead of giving credit to God. God is the one that always gives us the victory. If it were not for God, many of us would be speaking German or some other language if it wasn't for God giving us the victory. And yet we put our military commanders in the strategies and say, hey, that's what gave us success. No, God is the one that gives us success. He should always get the credit for it. Hey, you missed it. That was a good place for an amen. A good, good place. You see, if you can't get excited about what God is doing in your life and what He is up to, my friend, do you know who God is? Do you know Him? Because He is all-powerful. He is almighty. The fourth thing I want us to understand here, God gave Joshua an exit strategy. You see, they say when you're preparing to to go into battle and you're preparing to win the war, you have to have an exit strategy. Because if you get in, you got to get out. I was reading this and I thought this was a little comical. Bill Vec on his strategy of trading players when he ran the old St. Louis Browns baseball team, he said, I always felt that the more Browns I could place on the other teams, the better off we would be. Hmm. That's pretty interesting, isn't it? Those of you that keep up with sports, sometimes you say, well, man, that player that we traded, that player that's on the other team, hey, he seems to do a whole lot better on that other team than he did on our team. God has people that He has strategically placed. And He strategically placed Joshua in that place to give direction and instruction. And notice this. He says here in verse 22, But Joshua had said to the two men who had spied out the country, Go into the harlot's house, And from there, bring out the woman and all that she had as you swore to her. And the young men who had been spies went in and brought out Rahab. Her father, her mother, her brothers, and all that she had. So they brought out all of her relatives and left them outside the camp of Israel. Verse 24. But they burned a city and all that was in it with fire. Only the silver and gold and the vessels of bronze and iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. And Joshua spared Rahab the harlot, her father's household, and all that she had. So she dwells in Israel to this day because she hid the messengers, the messengers whom Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. Then Joshua charged them at that time, saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord who rises up and builds the city of Jericho. He shall lay its foundation with his firstborn, and with his youngest he shall set up its gates. So the Lord was with Joshua 
And his fame spread throughout all the country. Basically what Joshua is saying here, don't take anything from Jericho because destruction will come and make trouble for Israel. He's still given specific instruction. Don't take anything from the city because if you do, it will create trouble for us. He says the silver, the gold, the articles of bronze and iron, they will be dedicated to the Lord and most go into the Lord's treasury. But I want you to think about it. When the priest and the Ark of the Covenant and the troops were there, when they were there at Jericho, what were they supposed to do in order to be able to receive the victory? After they had marched around six days, one time, the seventh day, They would go around seven times. And when Joshua would give the word, they were supposed to do what? Be really quiet, right? Don't want to be considered to be charismatic. You might get a little too loud. They were supposed to do what? They were supposed to do what? They were supposed to do what? They were supposed to shout! With a war cry, God has the victory. Now, if that made you uncomfortable, you take it up with God. Because God wants us to shout His praises and to give Him the credit. Now, if we are to shout with a war cry, if we were to just... Imagine this in our minds. Hey, we're getting ready to go and fight. And somebody gives the order to shout. It took you a few times to get there, but you got there. Thank the Lord you got there. What would you do? Would you obey God? Or would you say, oh, I'm not doing that. That's ridiculous. You just revealed your spiritual condition between... You and Almighty God. Repent and get your life in order with God before it's eternally too late. Rebelliousness in the heart is as witchcraft. And unless you repent and get right with God, you are eternally damned and you will experience His destruction. Have you ever wondered what would have happened if they would have given up? Listen, don't ever give up. Don't you ever give up. I'm just going to use this as an example to you. Sometimes when you're, where you're coaching kids, they get hurt out there on the court. I mean hurt, you know, they got tears and man, they've taken a great fall. And sometimes they, they want to come out of the game and they want to sit next to the coach and then after about five seconds, hey, they're feeling a lot better. You look them in the eyes and you say, you stay out there on the court. You stay out there on the field. You stay out there doing the work of the Lord and don't you ever give up. Don't you ever give up. God is in control and He is on His throne. We need to keep trusting and waiting on God. Isaiah said it this way, Therefore the Lord, in Isaiah 30 verse 18, Therefore the Lord we wait that He may be gracious to you and therefore He will be exalted, that He may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are those who wait on Him. You like to wait, don't you? Say, oh no, preacher, I'm real impatient. You'll make a lot of mistakes in life if you don't wait on the Lord. You wait on the Lord, you trust in Him, He's got a plan, He's got a purpose. And as they were walking around the city of Jericho, it was by faith in the Lord. And in God's time, the walls came crashing down, tumbling down in God's time. But they had to follow the instructions. What happened in this city? Oh man, it's a wonderful testimony. Rahab and her family were spared. 
The two spies that were sent by Joshua fulfilled their oath to Rahab and her family. You know what happened to Rahab? Some of you know this. But she married someone by the name of Salmon. And she became the great, great grandmother of David and the ancestor of Jesus. Matthew chapter 1 verse 5. She lived because she believed. She trusted in God. She had faith in God. When she received the spies into her home, she was saying, I believe. So in closing today, I want you to think about this. Jesus was protecting his earthly family in this moment. Protecting his earthly family. Who protects our families? Jesus does. But you may have a hard time with this. I don't know if you noticed it. He protected those that believed. But Jesus, God, called for the destruction of everyone that was in that city. Total destruction. You say, well, preacher, I remember Sodom and Gomorrah. God rained down His fury, His wrath because of that city. But my friends, don't forget about Jericho. You say, well, why would God do this? The Bible tells us in Leviticus chapter 18, write that in your margin, verses 24 through 30, that Canaan was defiled. It was a vile city. God had to wipe out to protect His people. Jericho had every opportunity to be able to repent, yet they did not repent. And so destruction would come to them. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 30, that by faith they took the remedy God provided, that is the children of Israel. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down as they encircled it for seven days. But there was a curse that was placed on Jericho. One that Joshua spoke. And he said, if you attempt to rebuild this city, firstborn will die. There will be mass destruction. But today, did you notice what it says about Joshua? It says, so the Lord was with who? Joshua. And his fame spread throughout all the country or the land. Let me ask you this this morning. Do you have a problem with that? God being with Joshua? And his fame spreading all over the land? I'll tell you what I know about some people. Just being honest. Some people are jealous and envious when somebody receives recognition for what God is doing. Let me tell you this, Joshua would give the credit to God. And when Joshua was successful, the people were successful if they followed God's instructions and did what God said to do. But if they didn't, we'll find out next week, there's consequences for not following all of the instructions that are given. In Hebrews 11.30, by faith the walls of Jericho fell down. Faith is what allows us to say what God has already said. Listen to me very carefully. Faith allows us to say what God has already said. To say this is what the Lord says and proclaim His truth and His word. And the shout of the children of Israel was affirming what God had already said. It was by faith, the Bible says that those walls came tumbling down. Maybe some of you would remember Dwight Eisenhower. He said, there are no victories at discount prices. No victories at discount prices. God is going to get the victory with us or without us. God got the victory there in that moment when the walls of Jericho came crashing down. Did they doubt? Doesn't have any indications here that they doubt it. Did they not trust God? No, it doesn't give any indication there. 
They listened to what Joshua said. Because they listened to the leader, success came. You know why? You know why, don't you? It was because of their faith. It was God's strategy. And let me tell you this. When God has a strategy, it's oftentimes in conflict with man's strategy. We say, well, I wouldn't do it that way. Aren't you thankful you're not God? He doesn't have to do it your way. He does it his way. And when we do it his way and follow his strategy, listen, if we're obedient to him, we win every time. We already have the victory over the devil, the world, and the flesh. Is there any walls in your life today that need to be broken down? Any things in your life that you're holding on to? You're not trusting God. You haven't fully surrendered to Him. Today you can do that. You can say, Jesus, I trust in You. I put my confidence in You. You got it all taken care of. Jesus, the best is yet to come with You. If that's you today and you haven't surrendered your life to Jesus, if you're not trusting by faith, you don't have faith. If you doubt in the dark what God has revealed to you in the light, then it's time to do business with God. He knows what is best for all of us. And He has a plan. And He has a purpose. And He will be exalted among the nations he will be exalted among the earth. Amen. With every head bowed, with every eye closed. Do you know Jesus? Have you surrendered your life to Him? When I was six years old, I trusted in Jesus. Uh, there have been some obstacles along the way. Some that I've created myself. But I know with God, there's the victory. We surrender all that we have to Him. And He wants to use us, to bless us, to work in our life in a special way. But we have to have faith in Him. Today, if you're in this building, you can admit to Jesus that you're a sinner. The Bible says for all of sin and fallen short of the glory of God. You can admit to Him that with Without Him, you're absolutely nothing. And you can ask Him to be the Lord and Savior of your life. Hey, and He will save you. He'll give you everlasting life. You won't doubt. There may be some times where you struggle with that just a little bit. But your faith is the victory that overcomes the world. If you don't know Jesus, you can. In just a moment here, come and let me know that where you were sitting this morning, you prayed and asked Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of your life. We'll celebrate with you just like they're celebrating in heaven at your decision. For others of you today, you say, I know that I know God. Let me ask you, do you really know Him? If you know Him, you're trusting in Him. You love Him. You serve Him. You live for Him. Your life is consumed with Him. Maybe today you need to settle some things in your own life with God. Maybe throughout the course of your life you have to admit you have a problem with God's divine instructions. You have a hard time listening to what He's trying to tell you to do. Maybe even listening to the people that He's placed in your life to help you and to give you instruction based upon the Word of God. Repent. Ask the Lord to work in your life in a special way. He will. He loves us. He loves us more than we can ever imagine. He loves us unconditionally. For others of you today, you may want to be, become a part of this sweet membership here. You have the opportunity. As I pray for us, after I get through praying, I want you to come and do business with God. Don't stay in that pew. And grieve the Holy Spirit of God. If He's tugging on your heart, if He's speaking to you, do not grieve Him if you know Him. If you don't know Jesus, you can trust Him. Lord Jesus, we love You. It's a privilege to be in this place today. We thank You for the truth that we've heard. 
and help us to apply it to every area of our life. Lord Jesus, I pray for that person that would be in this building today that does not know you as their personal Lord and Savior, that today would be the day that they trust in you, surrender their life to you before it's eternally too late. Lord, I pray for others throughout this building, Lord, that that they have to be honest with you, that they haven't been trusting you, they've been doubting, they've been having concerns that are unsubstantiated based upon your word. And so, Lord, help us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand and come and do business with the Lord today. As Melanie plays, you come. Others, will you come and do business with the Lord? By the Holy Spirit is dealing with you. Don't harden your heart to the things of God. You can trust Him. You can receive Him. And if you know Him, do business with Him while you have the opportunity to. Thank you. You may be seated. For those of you that have watched us online today, thank you for being a part of our service here at First Baptist Cachata. Lord willing, we'll meet back here tonight at 6 o'clock. And if you're able to, come and be a part of our worship here in this building. If not, encourage people to be online with us. Have a wonderful day.